Online Tutorial Number 3 Airflow Design Module In this tutorial, we will demonstrate what the Airflow Module is used for, how to use it, and why this software can save you considerable amounts of time, money, and effort on your HVAC design and retrofit projects. The Airflow Module is a design aid for commercial grade HVAC design and retrofit projects. It is a combination of computer code running under the MS Excel user interface. It was designed to streamline and accelerate two HVAC design stages. The sizing and selection of diffusers and sizing of duct networks, regardless of their complexity. We will illustrate how the airflow module works on the sample building. Where the cooling loads and supply airflows were calculated in our previous online tutorial using the design loads module. To provide comfortable spaces, the engineer should calculate the optimal trajectory and velocity characteristics of the supplier stream and select diffuser type and layout that will provide the desired air distribution. Manual calculations require significant effort and time and are thereby costly. For this reason, they are often substituted with a selection diffuser based on space supply airflow requirements only, while disregarding the effects of airflow dynamics. The result may be poorly designed spaces, where occupants feel cold or hot drafts, or stagnant air zones. The solution. This is where the airflow module comes into play. This tool introduces significant automation into the air distribution design steps, thereby saving engineers and designers in the HVAC industry amounts of effort and significantly reducing the chances of mistakes by automatically calculating all airflow trajectories and required characteristics of diffusers. Another significant benefit achieved through the use of the airflow module is true modularity. For example, should the architect change the style of diffusers, you can simply redefine the diffuser properties in the airflow module. The module will instantly recalculate the new diffuser characteristics and suggested quantities. In our previous online tutorial we calculated design loads and airflows for the same sample building using the design loads module. Let us quickly review. Here are the reports from the design loads module. We have Space name and design supply airflow requirements Design heating and cooling loads are found in the following reports. We now have the airflow module open at the diffusers tab. Input space names into column C. By creating links to the worksheet reports of the module design loads. From the drop down menus, in column D, select the types of air outlets. In our example, we have selected circular ceiling diffuser in all cases. Enter the floor to ceiling heights into column E. We now fill the next three columns designated for space airflow rates floor areas, and design cooling loads, by following the same procedure. Creating links to the report tab of the design loads module. We see that the software has calculated a suggestion for the optimal number of diffusers for each space and their recommended characteristics. Number of outlets. Horizontal jet projection. Vertical jet projection. Characteristic length. Throw to characteristic length ratio. Throw at 50 FPM. And airflow rate per outlet. Next, we use a manufacturer Euro S catalog to select the actual diffusers we want for each space. We may wish to select slightly different units than what the software is recommending depending on, for example, specific aesthetic requirements. Here is the diffuser schedule we filled in. 
Model name. Neck diameter. Actual throw. Noise criterion. And static pressure loss through the diffuser. This schedule will appear in the report tab. The report tab summarizes all our inputs and outputs. The reports are useful for submitting work review and using construction documents. Here are the reports. We have the diffuser sizing schedule. The information is complete. Sufficient to include in both review and tender packages without any modifications. Link modules will be very handy to keep us dedicated files for each of your projects. Unlike standalone HVAC design tools, the HVAC Academy modules do not require installation. You can work on your project from any computer with Microsoft Excel. Limited only to the location or number of users for which you have purchased the product license. In case of any principal changes to the building geometry, thermal resistance, or any other aspects of the project, you will not need to re-enter the data. Simply make the change and the modules will recalculate and resize all affected project elements. The more modules you link together, the more automation you will have in designing your project. Let us now have a look at the floor plan with the diffusers we have just designed. Next we tie the diffusers together with duct work. Here is the completed layout. Now the question is, what duct sizes will best suit the design airflow rate to each space? Usually, duct sizing is a tedious and time-consuming manual procedure, based on using a duct friction loss chart or a sliding diagram to first determine each branch size, then check the overall pressure drop for each branch, and resize branches to have similar pressure requirements. All this, to this day, is still typically done manually. The accuracy, tracking, editing, and performing iterations are typical problems of such manual procedures. To eliminate these issues, the airflow module includes a duct tag, which automates the sizing process thereby saving the engineer significant amounts of time, effort, and mistakes. The module calculates the air velocity, friction, fitting, and total pressure losses in the duct work, based on your choices of duct dimensions and type of material. It should be noted that most manual sizing charts use a single generic duct material friction factor, whereas, the airflow module allows you to select from a variety of typical duct constructions, each having its own frictional loss coefficients. To begin sizing duct work, first, select an approximate temperature of air in the ducts, from the drop-down menu, in cell C5. The worksheet will automatically determine the air viscosity and density required for the calculations. Now, size the longest and most loaded ductwork branch to obtain the static pressure that the air handling unit supply fan will need to generate. You will repeat the same procedure for all duct paths. In our sample building, the most loaded duct path starts at the air handler and ends in space 101. Divide the duct path into sections with constant airflow rates, as shown here. For example, this is section 11212. The next step is to calculate the airflow rates for each of the marked sections. For example, the airflow rate for section 1112 equals to the airflow rate through one diffuser. Section 1011 carries air for two diffusers. Therefore, the airflow rate for this section is double the rate of section 1112. Now, enter the flow rates for each section by creating links to the diffusers tab. Enter duct section lengths. From the drop down menu in the adjacent column, select the appropriate duct material. In our example, we will use flexible metallic duct for branch ends and galvanized steel for the main ducts. In the next two columns, select a diameter for round ducts, or height and width for rectangular ducts. The code will immediately return the friction loss rate and air velocity. Change the duct size until the values fall within a desired range. Lastly, we need to calculate the impact of fittings and dampers on the total pressure loss in the duct work. 
To do this, obtain the corresponding fitting loss coefficients for each of these elements. For learning purposes, you may use loss coefficient tables provided in our A to Z HVAC design course. For example, section 1112 includes a branch T and a balancing damper. Input the sum of the corresponding coefficients into column K. Enter custom pressure drops into the next two columns. For example, section 1112 contains a diffuser. Input the pressure loss across the diffuser found in the diffusers tab. The code automatically returns the dynamic, friction, fitting, and total pressure losses in the designated columns for each section. Size the other sections of the path by repeating the same procedure. To obtain the total static pressure requirement for this duct path, simply sum up all the section pressure losses from column U into cell G5. You will later use these pressure requirements to size the air handling unit. In summary, the airflow module allows the engineer to design complex duct systems while avoiding much of the effort which is otherwise incurred in manual procedures. Linking any or all of the HVAC Academy modules will provide the engineer with a highly flexible and highly automated design system tailored to the specific project needs and thereby reduce design times and mistakes.